Hello, my friends. I'm Reverend Dr. Juliana Taylor, and I'm a psychologist in Christ, a prophetic psychologist. That's a psychologist that hears from God. And I've heard from God today, and God wants to talk about something, so I'm going to share it. And we're going to start off with this scripture. His grace is sufficient for thee, and his strength is made perfect in your weakness. 1 Corinthians 12, 19. Amen? Now, how can you fall from grace then? Reverend Juliana, if his grace is so sufficient for me, how come... I have days when I feel like I'm in the grace of God. I feel connected to people. I feel very open. I feel God's presence. I feel his love, the grace of God. Things are going my way. It's all good. And then I have days when nothing is right. I'm shut down. Is that, is that my weakness that the God is, I'm supposed to do something to have the perfection of grace come through my weakness? What's going on here? So I like to call this a fluctuating consciousness, a fluctuating consciousness. There's not a stability in who you are in Christ. Amen. And this goes back to a belief system. You know, everything has to come by faith. Faith worketh by love and grace worketh by faith. Amen. So what is faith? Faith is a belief in the truth. Now, if the truth is not the truth, and you have faith that it, it's not going to work. But a belief in God's truth. Amen. Not a positive thinking, mental sin, but a belief in something that's a fact, which is his grace is sufficient for you. The grace of Jesus Christ is sufficient for you. When you're down, when you're up, when you've made a mistake, when you're in total error, when you've done everything wrong in your life, amen, you are saved, sanctified, flesh from spirit, by the grace of God. Well, Reverend Juliana, yeah, I, you know, I've heard that song before. But what happens when I'm not in grace? <laughs> Amen. I'm laughing because there's so much identifying what's going on. But, you know, I always wanted to know, well, what do I do? I have a problem here. Can't you see I'm having a bad day? Amen. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what is our faith in? Our faith, is our faith really in grace? Or do we believe that we're having that bad day? We're having a rotten day because we did something wrong. You know, I know people, they spend, you know, a year repenting over something that they did wrong. Oh, I, got, I went before the Lord, Reverend Juliana. Oh, I've repented it. And I went before the Lord the next day. And I've repented it to God. But I still feel like I'm not back where I was. I'm not back in grace. You know, I have a good day and then I fall from grace. This expression, falling from grace. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You cannot fall from grace. This is an illusion. This is an impossibility. This is a consciousness fluctuation. What are you talking about, Reverend Juliana? You are being played by the carnal mind. You are being played by the imposter of your identity, the flesh. The flesh has, thinks it has an opportunity now. Hey, you slipped up, you know, boom! And it took over your consciousness, your mind, your thoughts. Come on. You know when you have those bad days, and maybe you're different, but I get negative when, I, when everything goes wrong and I have back pain, it's not going my way, and you know, if I'm not watching what's going on up there, it gets negative. Now let me tell you a little bit about what happens when you're not watching what, what is going on in your mind. I was going to say your thoughts, but they're not really your thoughts, because when you have a little problem in your life, you feel like you fell from grace, grace, you didn't take care of yourself maybe, you didn't express yourself, you weren't true to yourself. That's how we shut down. When we say fall from grace or my heart shut down a little bit, if you could feel it when you're having a bad day, if you go in and feel your heart a little bit, you're a little bit shut down. You're not in that love of God. You're not, oh, hallelujah, I love everybody, I'm having a great day. Oh, I could do anything day. You're in that, oh, God, how am I going to get through this day? I've got to go to work. I want to go back to bed. Amen. There's a reason why you're there. You were in a situation perhaps where you didn't take care of yourself. 
One of the ways we shut down our hearts is by not being true to ourselves, not being authentic to yourself. I mean, there's a hundred videos on here that you could catch up with that one if you think that may be what's going on with you. That is a way that we shut down, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about, so I wasn't true to myself, now what? What do I do when I shut down? If his grace is sufficient, I should be able to make a mistake. I like to say we are in the school of the spirit, which means the trial and error system of life. You're never going to do it all right. I'm never going to do it all right. We're going to fall from grace, but you can't fall from grace, but it's going to feel like that. We're going to be deceived to think a religious belief, which is I fell from grace or however your mind believes it. I didn't take care of myself and, and now, you know, I'm a little shut down and I don't feel good and I think I'll go to sleep and recover from this. You know, I did something wrong. I, I had a glass of wine last night. I didn't respond properly to somebody. I haven't read the word. You know, there's a million things that mind can go through. Any, anything it wants to tell you, if you're going to accept it and believe it, amen, it's going to speak now. It doesn't have to be the biggest deal in the world, but this is what happens when the carnal mind, the imposter of your identity, speaks to you. In your mind, which you have complete control of, it'll say, oh, boy, you know, you really blew it last night. I can't believe you went back to that same situation after God delivered you from it, and you reacted the same way with those people. Boom. Now, the minute that happens, boom. You just got you just got a fluctuation in consciousness. Your heart slammed. You got flucked. I like to call it you got flucked, honestly, because it's a fluctuation of consciousness. And now you've got to get the carnal mind flucked. You got to give it back. You, amen, have to change your consciousness. This is where his strength is perfected in your weakness. Hallelujah. Let's get real. You are down now. And you have had better days. Why? Amen. Better days because you were at some, you didn't give your power away that day. You took care of yourself better. You were on. You just read the word for two hours. You were high in the spirit. Something happened as things do in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's only a few things that could really shut down your heart. One is the thoughts that you're thinking. The other is when you do give your power away. And the third one is when you're not in faith. You're just bowing to everything and everyone. Amen. And that's another video. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Other than that, you know, I'm saying you don't have to watch every little thing. There's a few ways to make the comeback. And I'm teaching today one of the ways, perhaps the most important one. Amen. Coming back in faith is good. But even then, you're going to have to know how to spot your thoughts. So now you are strong when you are weak because God has given you power. God has given you divine authority. God has sanctified you. What does that mean? You are saved. What does that mean? That means you're sanctified. What does sanctified really mean? You are separate from the flesh. Well, what do you mean? The flesh, the thoughts of the flesh, the beliefs of the flesh, the old ways of the flesh, the familiar spirits of the flesh, you are separate from. Oh, great, Reverend Juliana, but you know, I don't feel like I have that power today. I know what you mean. Uh, there was a day when I, had, I was a little stronger, maybe I was in the word more, you know, when I had that and I saw the thought. It's not what the word says. It says when you are weak, you are strong. Hallelujah. It says that we watch and pray. Now, if you are not doing this, you're having a lot of bad days and suffering unnecessarily because you're not allowing yourself to be strong when you are weak. You're trying to do it all in your own strength without the grace of God. Amen. Now, having the grace of God doesn't mean that Jesus comes down in a big white horse and fights all your battles for you. It means that he gave you the power and authority that he has is now yours. Hallelujah. That's sanctification. You are separate. And now you are, because you know you're separate, able to identify when something comes in that is not so separate. Amen. And tries to overtake you. Because that thought may look like a little something. 
I mean, I'm going to give an example. It may look like a little something, but it's shutting down your heart, which is lowering your consciousness. The barometer of the heart is the barometer of, of how open you are to your spiritual fruits, to the mind of Christ. This is one whole piece here. This is not all separate. You know, you can't shut down and, and maintain your spiritual position because faith worketh by love, which is an open heart. And if your mind starts thinking negative things and judgmental things and self-righteous things and negative things, you are not in love. You are not in faith. You are in the old nature, amen, which is taking this opportunity to beat you up, to fluctuate your consciousness, to take you in a familiar spirit, a way of the past that you're used to, a way of thinking, a way maybe that your mother and father taught you to think of programming, a way that you used to think as a child, a way that you had that way of being before you got saved, before you were sanctified, separate, had the power, amen, and the wisdom to not receive what doesn't belong to you. This is Christianity. Amen. This is the power of your walk with God. Amen. You are not going to walk in love without guarding your heart. How is it going to happen? Because something's going to happen. You're going to get a little lowered. You're going to receive the thought. Your heart is going to shut. And there goes three days. Hallelujah. There goes your love. And here comes that old nature with whatever it's got from what you were raised with, what you're familiar with, every familiar spirit, every negative word that you heard, it's coming in for the kill. Why? Because you are in the war between the flesh and the spirit, which is a faith war and a mental war, a war to learn who you are your divine rights, and come out of that condemnation that you have to pay. You did something wrong. Stop getting beat up by the flesh, by self-exaltation, by doubt, by fear, by condemnation. That's religion. That is not the grace of God. His grace is sufficient. So now, okay, you know, you're walking around, you don't realize it. I'm going to share an incident that I had today. It wasn't a big thing, but I certainly felt it. Amen. It had to do not so much with today, but something that happened yesterday, and I got a little lower. No big deal. It wasn't a big deal. It was a small deal, but maybe not as high as I could be. Hallelujah. So the flesh wants to take this opportunity, amen, to fluctuate my consciousness, my thoughts, what is consciousness? A, a stability of thought. The word says, be ye not double-minded. A stability of thought. Amen? That when the eye is single, the whole body is full of light. You're up. You're in the mind of Christ. The whole body is full of light. You're emulating love and power and authority in Christ. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're, you're thinking that. Your mind has light. Hallelujah. But that flesh can come in, boom, like that quick. And it can go out that quick if you don't receive it. When you don't receive it, you will feel the presence and anointing of God. Amen. So, I'm taking a walk in the park this morning. Um, it's, it's a Saturday morning. Now, during the week, it's not, not like this, what I'm going to explain what's going on there. But I like to take a walk before I make a video just to clear my head. Amen. Good idea. Clear the head. What's wrong with this picture? So I'm taking my walk and I notice this. Everybody's on their iPhone. I mean, nobody's looking at each other. Everybody is sitting, walking in the park with the dogs. Like this, like, no, yeah. Oh, well, my carnal mind thought it would take me out with everybody else's iPhone. And all of a sudden, I notice that I'm feeling a little negative. I'm shut down. Now, this is what we do. You go up there and you see what's going on. And I'm thinking, what could happen? I'm taking a nice walk in nature. Then I realize, oh, mm -hmm. it has an opinion. You see that carnal mind? It has an opinion. It has a suggestion. It has a judgment. It has a hate. This thing is working against you to shut down your heart. Amen. So I'm watching it now. You know, I'd like to say a little prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to your sight. My words and my thoughts be holy unto the Lord. Amen. Why? 
so I don't get a fluctuating consciousness. Amen. Amen. To protect myself. Let me be aware. Let me not be deceived by the old nature to giving me some alleged fall from grace that can't even happen. I'm being played. Because it could feel like that. Okay. So now, I go up there. You know, I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not on my own understanding. What's going on? How does God see this? Hallelujah. He will make perfect all those whose eyes are stayed on him. I'm watching now. Hallelujah. And I see that the old nature, the carnal mind, you know, it has some ideas, some opinions. It knows everything about this whole fall thing. Very negative judging people. Well, you know, they're here in the park and they're on their phones. And, oh, and then it has, what's going on with the world? You know, <laughs> so I started to speak. And, you know, I stopped it and I noticed this sometimes. And this is something that you can easily do. Take over your thoughts. Big deal. You can watch or you could take over. Take over. Very powerful. So I just declared, I said, you know, I know one thing, that God is in control of this world. And if God wants everybody on the iPhone for a season to evolve them into something else, it's his world. Amen? Because that's the way it is. And God could, you know, just zap all the iPhones off the world. He created them, and now they're here, and people are looking at them, and this is all going to fall into God's plan. Well, that was a little better, you know. Amen? I made my point. I agreed with God. Then I started seeing other things. Anyway, I started thinking. I'd see somebody go by. I said, isn't that wonderful? You know, that's a beautiful dress. I love the thing. Whatever. Take over your mind. Do not allow the imposture of your identity, familiar spirits of the past, self-exaltation, self-righteousness, all that judgment, all that hate, victimization. Don't agree with negative things thinking. Amen. Take it back and change. Now, I'm watching the thoughts and I'm watching my heart. Amen. And I notice if I get let any little negative thing come in, it's affecting my heart. It's shutting me down. Amen. I'm lowered. Now, I didn't fall from grace. I'm receiving deception. Are you hearing me? I'm receiving deception. Now, no matter what you did yesterday, what your big mistake was, it's not as big as receiving deception and making the, the, the mind of Christ, which is a gift of grace from God, null and void in your life. Your human error that you were deceived into making because you, the Spirit, 1 John 3, 9, really can sin, so you already, you know, gave power to the flesh there. Amen. Now, your human error is nothing because his grace is sufficient for you and his strength will your will be made strong his power in your weakness and that's what's happening now so i did that for a few minutes i went on fire i mean the anointing of god fell and it broke that because that was the absolute truth but you know you got to think when you see something like that how often is this happening i need a closer watch Amen. I need, and so do you. We need to really see what's going on and take our minds back. So what's underneath all that is some belief that you can be shut down. Some kind of punishment, some kind of sin consciousness. The very thing that we have been redeemed from because we weren't from sin consciousness. Right? The law of sin and death, all those curses, all those familiar spirits, everything was negative. Everything was negative. Everything, nothing could be forgiven. Amen. Into becoming who we are, the new creature in Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. The perfect law of liberty. Well, it's everything is perfect in him. We are in Christ. You can't, you can't uh, be in both places here. You can't be double-minded. You have to choose who you are and stand therein. So standing can be standing, taking a land that you've relinquished, or standing also is standing against the thoughts that want to permeate 
your consciousness, fluctuate your consciousness, fluctuate your spiritual barometer where your spirit could be up here, but after an hour of, of negative thinking it is down here. And who is going to change that? Is God going to come down and say, oh, my grace is sufficient here. Vroom, you know, your thoughts are gone. No, God says, bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. I'm talking real things here. And a simple way to do it. When you're feeling shut down, check out what's up and say, you know what? His grace is sufficient for me. And right now, from this moment on, I am going to keep my mind stayed on him. I'm watching. I'm watching and praying. I'm watching my mind and I'm watching how it affects my heart. Amen. Because how it affects your heart is affecting your love, is affecting how you are if you can get into the spirit. Amen. Faith worketh by love. Hallelujah. Do not be deceived by the old nature because 25-7, it is trying to take you out of Christ. It doesn't want to die because you will increase and it will decrease as you start taking over your thoughts. So that is what I wanted to share today. It's what God led me to share, that his grace is sufficient. Amen. And your strength, your power, your weakness will rise, will rise high. Amen. You will take back your fluctuating consciousness into the mind of Christ. But you have to do it. And if you have trouble watching it and negating and rejecting those thoughts, just take your thoughts back. Take it away. Do a takeaway. Start thinking about something else, something bright. Think in faith. Hallelujah. So simple, isn't it? Just you're the chooser. And you will see that you are the chooser of your thoughts. And you will see that your heart is responding to your thoughts, the words, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to your sight. Amen. God bless you. I know this is going to change your life. Amen.